Imagine a typical collegiate athletic game day event and everything that goes into it. So players have been practicing for hours and hours, perfecting their technical and tactical abilities. Coaches have been putting in equal amount of time, getting their players ready, breaking down opponents' game tape, looking for any kind of tactical advantage they could use on the day of the game. Well, the day of the game is here. The players are ready put on their uniforms, they're ready for battle, and they step into the arena. Kentucky, along with the mini wave, equalizer going to land on Surlaus, the calling finishes him off. Nami wave just barely lifts up Unicorn in the back line, and this most certainly should do it. Robert Morris University. Oh, 06 is pushing to the Nexus, but does not quite get taken out. And this should secure it. Pantheon coming in with his ult from behind, and they're waiting for him. Does he find the kill on signature? No, he does not. And that ends the game with a rumble double kill, finishing it off RMU 2-0 over Kentucky. One year ago, I launched the first ever varsity esports program fully integrated into an athletic department right here at Rob Morris University in Illinois in Chicago. We recruited and awarded over $500,000 of athletic scholarship money to some of the best video game players across the United States and even other countries. And I'm sure many of you have seen the screen, but as soon as I say the word video games, I'm sure some of you, depends how old you are, defaulting to probably a couple of those games up there. And they're great games. I played all of them, maybe not Pong, but... Um, <laughs> but generally, to get to be very, very good and skilled at some of those games, it takes repetition, playing them over and over and over. You get to memorize different platform routines or different patterns and schemes of opponents' timings. And video games today are much more sophisticated. Video games today, and especially eSport video games, require a real tactical knowledge of the game. They require real sophistication. They require a real in-game technique to be successful. The video game that we brought all those talented student athletes in to play competitively at our university is called League of Legends. League of Legends is a video game type. Raise your hand if you've heard of it. Oh, wow, okay, it's not too bad. It's a video game type that's defined as a MOBA. It's a multiplayer online battle arena. And here comes the quick crash course. Basically, two teams of five players each battle it out on this map through a fog of war environment, so you're not able to see the other team's movements. So tactical surprise and strategy are seen as imperative to success. The end goal is to destroy the other team's home base. And you can see in the corners, it's called a nexus. That's the home base. So that's the team goal. Each player on the teams chooses to play as a champion. And each champion has a specific skill set or ability. And there's over 100 to choose from. And choosing a champion is very important as it relates to your, uh, the synergy of your team and the composition of your team. And then as that relates to the makeup of the game and how well you do. Typically, the, the teams that do the best have very skilled players, but teams that often win the most have very skilled players, but work well together as a team. They work well through communication and through team strategy. League of Legends is the most popular esport video game there is. 27 million people play League of Legends a day. It has its own global professional league. And there's over 50 teams across the world that play League of Legends professionally. And in fact, in 2013, the World Finals were held in Los Angeles, where they sold out the Staples Center in one hour. I got one better. In 2014, they held the World Championships in Seoul, South Korea, where 40,000 people came out to watch League of Legends live. So, 40,000 people in the formal FIFA World Cup Stadium to watch these 10 guys play a video game, League of Legends, live. And the viewership numbers are also staggering. The 2013 World Finals, viewership numbers for League of Legends outpaced Major League Baseball's World Series and the NCAA Final Four combined. And that's just one game 
in the esports industry. And when we talk about an esports industry, we're talking about games and different titles, competitions, players, and viewership. And it's an industry that's on the rise. New Zoo research tells us that. Okay, New Zoo research. New Zoo research tells us that in 2014, persistent viewers of esports are 90 million. So persistent means more than once a month. It's estimated in 2015 that number is going to be 116 million, and then in 2018, the growth of persistent esport viewers is going to be 165 million people. And that's not playing the game. That's for people watching as a sport. And that's a global number, but if you put it in perspective, that's half of the United States. With those kind of viewership numbers, we're beginning to see entertainment and major corporations take notice. So it's corporations that we all know. Companies like American Express, Coca-Cola, uh, Geico, Steel Series are all beginning to pour money into either sponsorship or advertising of, of teams and competitions. You just recently announced TBS, Turner Broadcasting Service, I think a, a channel most of us have on our cable or direct TV or whatever, that they would begin broadcasting esports competitions in 2016 for a game called Counter-Strike on primetime television on Friday nights. And last year, Amazon, the retail giant, purchased what's seen as the standard broadcasting platform, uh, a service called Twitch, for $1 billion. Now, Jeff Bezos certainly saw a future in esports, and so did I, except I saw the future in collegiate athletics. And my background a little bit, you know, I was a Division I college athlete on a scholarship. I played college soccer, but I also always loved video games. I've also been very good at video games, but probably more importantly that I've always loved and, and, and was good at them is that I respect video games. I respect the talent and skill that it takes to be very good at them. So after I downloaded League of Legends and played it a lot, like my wife would get mad at me, that kind of a lot, I was at awe at times of the skill and ability level of the players I was playing with and against. And that's when it hit me. Why, why couldn't this skilled, complex, nuanced game be a varsity sport at my school? So I drew up a proposal of how I thought it could work, and I, I brought it to our administration. Now, the first thing there needs to be for anything to be a college sport is other colleges to play. And that already existed. The Collegiate Star League has been around for a couple of years. It's a volunteer organization, and they organize video game esports competitions between schools. Over 300 schools participate. Schools we all know, Harvard, MIT, Northwestern, U of I, Western Illinois, Texas A&M. We would enter that league, but we would do it differently. The way it operates before we entered in, Northwestern University, say if there's five kids who are interested and like to play League of Legends, they would form a team and enter it into the Collegiate Star League. Collegiate Star League would take all the teams that enter and set a schedule, and then they would play on the weekends. So the five kids from Northwestern playing from their dorm room, say against five kids from U of I playing from their dorm room. But we would go all in as a full varsity sport. We would hire a coaching staff. We would recruit players. We would award scholarship to attract elite talent. And our scholarship levels are similar to what we offer at Robert Morris University for traditional sports. Right now, our varsity scholarship sits at 70% tuition, which is upwards of $20,000 of athletic scholarship money. In the same way as we get equipment and gear for our traditional athletes, like baseball or football, we would do the same for esports. So we provide training gear, we provide uh, hoodies, we provide warm-ups, we provide uniforms. And further, we need a space for our esports teams, athletes, and coaches to play and practice. So we built the first of its kind ever varsity esports athletic arena on our campus, I Buy Power Esports Arena at RMU. And it has the best gaming systems and gaming peripheries or, or gaming equipment available on the market today. And further, we don't use it as a classroom, and we don't use it 
as a computer lab when they're not practicing. This is for esports and serious esports alone. You know, one of the knocks sometimes I hear about bringing collegiate esports or bringing video games into as a varsity sport is, well, you know, all they're going to do, they're not going to pay attention to class, they're just going to want to play video games all day. That's why collegiate is a perfect setting for it, because now as college athletes, they need to maintain GPA, because they're athletically eligible. They need to be athletically eligible to play. So they need to have a certain GPA, and they need to earn hours of progress to graduation. My point is, we needed it to be a full varsity sport, which I fully believe it is. But not everyone agrees with me. John Skipper, the ESPN president, recently said, esports is not a sport, it's a competition. Chess is a competition. Checkers is a competition. Mostly, I'm interested in doing real sports. Like I says, real sports. I'm forced to watch World Series of Poker all hours of night at uh, ESPN2, you know? <laughs> so, but that's the question. And, and I get it. Are esports a sport? And to me, you, it's like splitting hairs, and it's a little bit of a slippery slope. Is football more or less of a sport than baseball? Is tennis more or less of a sport than, than golf? What do you do with NASCAR? Everyone considers that a sport. And I can only tell you this, as, as over 15 years as a college coach, that the same things it takes to be elite at traditional sports, minus cardiovascular exertion, are the same things that it takes to be elite at Esports is things like integrity and character, commitment, technical ability, dedication, your ability to work within a team. And if you take a step even further back, why are sports and athletics in colleges and universities to begin with? Whenever you say collegiate athletics, everyone automatically defaults to, oh, NCAA Final Four basketball, and that's awesome, and Bowl Championship Series football, and that's awesome too. But those spectacles of those athletics, I have a feeling that... The real reason is, and I can tell you as a, as a small college athletic administrator, we talk about athletics as a, as a second classroom. That's where you're learning real life skills on how to work with people. That's where you're becoming a better person. That's where you're building character and you're becoming a better human through athletics. You're learning how to work on a team, as a team, how to win and lose as a team. What does that feel like? You're learning how to take direction from a coach and you have to be committed for your team. Why wouldn't we offer all those unbelievable lessons through athletics to this unique, you know, some people characterize as outsiders, talented group of students where we could validate what they're good at, bringing them in that environment, and help them gain self-confidence, help them gain communication skills by working through a team and learning how to communicate as a team. What is, how do you talk to someone after you win or lose? It's a big difference. And those are the lessons, I think, that make a big difference. And I see them walking around our campus wearing their esports gear, either the warm up hoodie or a uniform, and they walk around with a swagger because they're a part of something bigger than just them in the game now. They're part of an esport department, they're part of an athletic department, and they're part of a university. And it matters. And I think that swagger isn't just from the gear on their back or, or what they're wearing. It's also, I think, partly related to how well we did last year. Every year, the makers of uh, League of Legends, the company, has a Final Four competition live in Los Angeles. So the Final Four best colleges at League of Legends, and guess what? We were one of them. And we flew out to Los Angeles, and we competed. We played against the University of Connecticut in the semifinals. We beat them, and then we lost, unfortunately, to a team in Canada. But still, our first year program made it all the way to the finals. Our first year program, out of 1,600 teams that entered in that competition, we were one of the final four, and we were the second best in North America, but first, oh, thank you, but first in the United States. And I'm so proud of our players and especially our coaching staff for, for what we accomplished just on that one year. And you know what? Over 100,000 people watched our finals game online. And by far, that's our biggest athletic event ever at Robert Morris University. So where are esports headed? You know, I, I think one day...
soon, we'll see esports in the Olympics. Olympics have historically been early adopters of new and untraditional sports. You think about snowboarding, where that was even just like 10 or 15 years ago. And I think we'll see League of Legends as the first esport uh, offered as the Olympics. I don't know, is it like a winter or summer? We'll leave that up to them to figure that out. But <laughs> Also, in e with esports, research shows that 40% of all gamers are female, yet less than 1% represent professional eSport players. That's why I think Collegiate is the perfect environment for female gamers to come and develop and grow, where they could play in the same environment, where it could be the first true varsity co-ed sport. I think right now that mostly eSports in Collegiate are based around PC titles. I think we'll see an expansion to console, PlayStation, and Xbox and especially into sports titles. And if you think it's controversial now, wait till we give the same amount of athletic scholarship money to a video game player of a football game as we do a football player. <laughs> that would be pretty awesome. We've seen a couple schools adopt our model this year in the fall of 2015. There are three or four schools that you know, offered esports, not fully ingrained in athletics, but as, as an option, maybe awarded a stipend. But I've spoken to over 60 and some big-time, big-time athletic universities all asking, how did you structure this? How does it work? What is this video game? What? So I think, while schools are somewhat slow to change, that we'll see this become more schools adopting our model. So where is Robert Morris Esports today? We're in our second year of competition. We've added a couple game titles to our esport offerings, Dota, Hearthstone, and uh, Counter-Strike, this guy looks confused. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I think that also we have, two, we have two PhD studies, one MBA, all doing case studies in our program. And this is amazing. NASA is doing a case study on our program regarding technology, teamwork, and human performance. Unbelievable. And you know, those guys at NASA are pretty smart because it is about human performance. It's about building better humans through athletics and through your university. That's what schools are supposed to do to begin with. And let me leave you with this one story that for me, I think sums it all up. And it was early on last year. It was probably the first or second week of our practice time. We were in the arena. We, it was a normal practice day. We had two teams. It was our maroon team against our gold team. And since it was so early, players were still kind of jockeying for position on the team. So you could tell it was tense. Players who had their headsets on, hunched over the keyboards, eyes locked on their monitors, and it was a close game. And it was a heated game. Players yelling at each other back and forth. And in the end, the Maroon team won. And what happened next was remarkable. These five video game players who likely got to be very good at what they do by playing alone in a room somewhere, these five video game players who have likely been characterized as introverted, these five video game players now unprompted got up out of their gaming chairs, took off their headsets, and walked over, and one by one went down the line and shook hands to the other team. Good game, hey, good game, good game. Those five video game players now as a team acted on one of the core tenets of all of athletics, was sportsmanship. And it wasn't e-sportsmanship, it was sportsmanship. And you may say, well, that's not remarkable. We see sports teams do that all the time at the end of athletic events. And that's my point exactly. Thank you.